This podcast was produced by Sean Weston Media. From a dimly lit cupboard somewhere in England, two people chat about communications, and sometimes they chat about other things. Welcome to From the Comms Cupboard. Should feedback be anonymous? Hmm. I don't think so. I come back to my general opinion of social media, especially Twitter. I have a love-hate relationship with Twitter. I see how good a tool it can be, but I also see how people hide behind anonymity and they say the most awful things. Through faceless accounts. Mm, Faceless accounts or... Well, well, yeah, you've said it really, faceless accounts. And they they think they can get away with saying the most hurtful, hateful things to people they don't know. And I think that's where anonymity doesn't work. Mm. But what you're asking about is anonymity at work, right? I'm thinking more at work. So in a situation um, where you're asked for feedback, I don't know, say an employee engagement survey or a decision's been made by the business and feedbacks as you know how people thought about that in that situation is it better for them to be anonymous or be able to be anonymous if they want to well what do you think it's an interesting one because undoubtedly if you let people be anonymous you may get more comments and more feedback but you may also get in a similar way to twitter more aggressive reactions to things maybe people are less professional in their feedback or less constructive less professional less constructive but perhaps uh, more honest yeah and you'll get more the amount of people yeah, giving the amount feedback of people and probably the amount of different types of comment i think it comes to culture of a of an organization but if there is a culture of distrust automatically you're going to get people fearing that they may be retribution if they give honest feedback even if that honest feedback is more constructive and it has come from a better place yeah there are, it depends on the culture of the organisation I think if you're uh, in somewhere where feedback is part of every day and people are regularly giving it which I don't think happens hugely in the UK as a society I don't think we deal with feedback so well or negative feedback so well I'm not too sure we deal with positive feedback. No, we don't. I think there's even my, you know, you know yourself that sometimes when someone gives you a compliment, you actually shy away from it. Yeah, we become all British. Oh, oh, really? It's oh, you don't have to. This is how I woke up. (laughs) (laughs) Please don't say anything else. (laughs) And I suppose I wonder whether when someone gives anonymous feedback, let's say on on a call. Mm. Uh, you know that, that sort of software that lets you see comments do you think it would be better if only the host sees those comments and then there is a sense of cherry picking a question that, you know so and so has asked a question and then they give the answer because my theory is before you, you, you I look you, like I'm chewing a wasp you look like I? you're chewing a wasp <laughs> my theory is that when others see aggressive questions they think it's okay to be aggressive themselves. It's a it's a really good point, isn't it? Perhaps it does, but I think one of the things that's nice about that, when people see aggressive, and it may encourage more similar types of comments. In an ideal world, you'll also see regulation of that by other people. So people, so people say, "Oh, that's not on," you know, and they'll provide more positive feedback as well. So they'll actually self-regulate themselves. So being able to see the good and the bad actually feels more balanced. Do you mean someone sees it and and moderates? Yeah, moderates it. So the the crowd moderates itself. Yeah, I think that idealistic. Yeah, it probably is idealistic. But if you're stopping negative comments coming through and you only let through what you want, what's the point? Hmm. You just is the whole idea of feedback to show everything to show a spectrum and then deal with it as a whole. Because feedback, you you should ask for it, and then you should act on it, shouldn't you? 
Mm. I think that's one of the problems that people have is why we don't give feedback is because we don't see any result from it. I like what you're saying. And I'd like to think that only positive things could come from that, like a self-moderating crowd and self-moderating feedback. But if your internal communications software, your tool that you use to host that feedback is then shown to be a bit like Twitter, hmm. how does that make the quiet people just reading that stream, how does it make them feel about their colleagues and the business they work for? Because sometimes that can have quite a negative effect. Yeah, it could, couldn't it? I think you could come away from a session. It must, you know, I'm guessing it would have to be something quite contentious that, you know, it, that is happening. Um, you could come away with more of a negative feeling about your colleagues, couldn't you? I think if think, you know, going back to the question about it being anonymous that's when you then don't know who it is do you so then it makes you question other people which kind of brings me back to why i think the most po the best feedback isn't anonymous you're open about what you think and you own your feedback but it takes a slightly different person uh, it's about being able to constructively air your grievances mm. uh, with confidence and perhaps we hide behind anonymity because we're not confident confident yeah or like you said we're afraid of the retribution but mm. again that still comes back to confidence are you confident yeah. about your own ability when you're looking for any decision and you have data that comes in you're looking for how relevant you think that data is so if i get a very negative anonymous comment do i take that as seriously as a a negative comment where i know the person it's come from the source of that information so I would say that if you know, having non-anonymous, is that the right word? <laughs> That's the right no, no, word. No, 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 no. If you know who the feedback's come from, you're more likely to take it on board. So things that are anonymous are maybe perhaps less powerful. Yeah. And if you do know who said that, you may think that's a great idea. Let's invite them to help with what they've suggested. Exactly. Whereas there's a level of anonymity I'm not keen on, is that it could always be the same people who just complain or find a reason to dislike something. Mm. But they'll never, it's a bit like, it's a bit like the schoolyard, isn't it? Yeah. Say it to my face or don't say it at all. Yeah. I like working with people who are confident enough to say, Sean, I don't think that's going to work, but I have a suggestion. Yeah, because that's... Let's hear it. That's constructive, isn't it? That's constructive. And that's a conversation. If he'd have come up to me and gone, Sean, that's bollocks. And I go away thinking, well, that wasn't very nice. And how does that help me? But then he says that to every project because he wants to be heard more. You know, that's some mm. sort of thing. And I think that's easy to do when you're anonymous on a feedback. Yeah. You become that person who just doesn't contribute which brings us back to Twitter and yeah. why people are angry on there, for example. Um, Did you hear Ricky Gervais's um, explanation, uh, description of what Twitter is? I haven't. Uh, it's writing on a toilet wall. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very true. I think we are all striving to work in organisations, or all organisations are striving for that kind of open, transparent culture where people and not afraid to speak up or say things. Is that realistic? Would that help us answer the question of whether we should be anonymous in our feedback? Is it realistic to think that everywhere is a safe space? 